Here are first results from 3D pose estimation using the, the Rift tracking camera. Let me just turn on the video feed and here we go. So what you're seeing now is, uh, is a couple of things going on at the same time. Uh, the green blobs, let me just use the mouse cursor, the green blobs you see, that uh, it's the raw incoming video frame and the green blobs are isolated uh, potential LED positions. The purple numbers that you see um, are the index of that particular blob, the LED index of that blob reconstructed from the blinking patterns and then the purple wireframe model, that actually is a 3D model of the DK2's uh, LED distribution, which I just created very easily, um, which is recon and, uh, the, con the position and orientation of that model is reconstructed from the video frames in 3D, so I have its position in XYZ and rotation in yaw, pitch and roll, uh, and then the 3D model is just drawn as a 3D model and projected back onto the LEDs. So this here shows uh, the quality of the pose estimation, uh, the position and orientation of the headset relative to the camera that I'm getting from just using optical operation. There's no sensor fusion yet. Um, the IMU, the inertial measurement unit that's in the Rift headset is not involved in this yet at all, which has some effects that I'm going to show you in a bit. But to prove that I'm not cheating, I'm not going to use my hand and cover up half the LEDs here. And you see how uh, the headset is still being tracked and uh, the wireframe is still drawn completely even though I'm covering half the LEDs and if I take my hand away um, then of course they, they uh, snap right back into place. So now if I turn this over to the side and we only track the LEDs on the, on the right side of the headset you see how it's a bit jittery and that is one of the side effects of not backing this up with inertial measurement data. Um, I'm now working on a somewhat under-constrained system where any kind of pixel noise in the image will result in a lot of noise in the orientation and measurement. That, of course, would be filtered out uh, the moment I start doing sensor fusion, which is the next step. Um, the other thing where uh, using the IMU comes in really handy is that right now the system loses tracking if I move the headset very quickly, like this. Uh, because then it loses the association between the uh, LED blobs in the image in the video frame. It can't identify them between frames uh, and then it has to start over from scratch which fortunately is a very quick process but if I had now uh, IMUs then my system would know that the headset moved from here to there so it could associate the LEDs between frames even if there are large fast motions like I'm doing here. Um, as I said, that's the next step. So right now I, was just, uh, I just wanted to look at the raw results from purely optical tracking uh, to see how good they are and as it turns out they're actually really quite good. Uh, let me go to a bit higher distance here. Uh, I'm now about six feet away with the headset from the camera and you see how it's a little bit hard to see because now the numbers are drawn so big that they kind of obscure uh, the 3D model but we are still tracking really really well uh, with, uh, with surprisingly little noise uh, and this is of course only going to get better once we uh, add in the IMU data. So that's it. We have, um, we have a first pose estimation result. We have very very usable 3D position orientation that can now be combined with the IMU measurement for hopefully a very stable uh, and, and low latency overall tracking solution for head tracking. Thank you.